Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we are rejoining Saturn uh, and this is our uh, mission designed to fly by uh, some at least of uh, Saturn's moons if not all. Uh, I, I really doubt that because Titan is very inclined uh, relatively speaking so that's going to be uh, a little more difficult to accomplish. Uh, we have a 797.3 meter per second burn to insert us into orbit, which we can do entirely on the back of our transfer stage. Um, amazingly enough, we don't even have to dip into the, our reserves here of our uh, solid rocket motor, which uh, in retrospect may have been a bit of a mistake including. I thought we were going to need it for orbital insertion, but apparently we got here uh, a little bit more efficiently than I had uh, initially anticipated. Uh, I will also activate this antenna. We could uh, use the short-range comms, provided, of course, uh, we're going to be... Well, that will be shut down. Uh, I don't know if these solar panels are going to generate... Now, oh, 3.4 watts. Um, if we can get 3.5 watts out of all of them... You know, we're looking at, like, 13.5 watts. I don't know if that's enough to uh, keep this stage alive and acting as a comms relay or not. Uh, it should be interesting to find out, however. Um, hmm. Anyway, so uh, let's take a look at our node here. It's a bit, oh, five hours. Wow, we came in uh, good and close. That's pretty awesome. So I did set an ascending node with uh, Epitus. Apetus. That is also well more inclined than I would like. Uh, these inner ring moons are really our primary objective, so I, um, I have set one of those as a target. They look to be more or less on the same plane, one or two offenders, a couple of degrees out here and there. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and warp to our orbit at insertion, and then uh, go from there. We should... Uh, certainly not ignore the view. Uh oh. We've just been kicked out of time warp for some reason. I don't know why. Hmm. Uh, okay, there's a transfer stage. That's probably the SRB and that's the probe itself. None of those have changed SOI. I don't know why we are uh, being kicked out of time warp. That's I love it when Kerbal Alarm Clock does that, or anything does that for just no apparent reason whatsoever. But uh, seeing as how we won't have to stage or do anything, I really I don't need to set up... Oh, what, what I should do. Two hours. Our signal delay is about an hour and a half. So I'm just going to toggle a radio in manually, and maybe we can get a... Yeah, we're high over Saturn's equatorial bands. We will hopefully be low... Oh boy, I didn't even double check that periapsis. Is that inside the atmosphere? I really hope not. Oh boy. Alright, let's come out of time warp here and uh, call our radio in command. Good, 1.35 hour. Almost to the T. So we'll just go ahead and resume time warping. Yep, I totally wanted to leave that alone. Do do do. Wow, okay. <laughs> so this is a view. Holy crap. <laughs> Never really gets old, does it? Had the camera not changed. Um, now I can't read our numbers. 45 minutes. Dang it, I can either admire the view or keep data relevant on the screen. That's super awesome. Okay, this is also a pretty dang good view, I have to say. I But I need to pay attention to stuff, so I'm really sorry. You're just going to have to enjoy the view with all the things in the way. Um, okay, there's our radio in coming back already. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and transmit this biological sample. It's only 30 science, and it is one of the uh, two that we brought along. So actually, you know what? No, we're going to reset it. Yeah, and it doesn't... 
Well, solar particle analysis. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll transmit that one home. I think that's all we're gonna get. Uh, this pass. Yeah, that's the other biological sample that we will also reset. Wow, Saturn is very bright. Okay, we'll come out of time warp. Our fuel tank is unlocked. Good, we have our CS control, so we'll go ahead and get ourselves angled into the node. There we go. And uh, what's our time look like? Two minutes. This is saying we can displace 1,400 meters per second in two minutes and eight seconds. So if we need to do uh, almost 800, which is a little more than half of that, we can probably uh, give it a couple of, we can get it down to about the minute mark, maybe a little less than. That's a very fast uh, insert into orbit. All right, here we go. Ullage. Uh, Let's bring this up just to make sure. Engine is good. Oh, come on. Close. <laughs> ignition. All right, it's a good light on our AJ-10. Does this thing have limited ignitions? It does. Oh, we only have one ignition left on that. Well, that is very interesting. Because I know we're going to have to do a plane change. And that's going to cost probably a good bit of Delta V. Uh, so I guess we'll just leave it for that. Hmm. Oh, man. I launched these things so long ago that we didn't have the AJ-10s with infinite ignitions, which have certainly spoiled me quite a lot. That is very interesting. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> okay, I need to... I should probably be watching my, uh, my, my telemetry here. All right, there's our orbit, and the camera rotates back. Now, I was just getting used to that other camera angle. That was really cool. All right, about 90 or so meters per second. We're just going to leave our orbit very eccentric, because that's how we're going to try to hit all of these moons. We'll just go a little bit past it because no big deal. There we go. Engine shut down. All right. And uh, this will be really inefficient, but uh, seeing as how we have exactly one ignition left. Oh, dude. Hold the phone. Maybe we should wait on that. We're only eight degrees off. From Aepitus. But are we eight degrees off in the wrong direction? No, it's the right one. We're still uh, bringing it down. So we should definitely shoot. F oh man, but we have one ignition left on our AJ 10. Oh boy. This is, this is a tough call. Do we basically ignore this moon? so that we have a better chance of hitting all of these other ones. Oh, but we can... That's only 3,700 meters per second. <laughs> okay, new plan. Um, we can correct out here for a lot of it. That's only 25 days away. And watch how much more efficient this is going to be. I was thinking, man, if we could do this... Yeah. Eh. No. Yeah, see, that's only 685 and brings us pretty daggone close. Yeah. Alright, ascending, descending node. Dot zero three. And that might put us on a two or three orbit track to uh, get those things done. Do we have anything coming up in the next 25 days or so? No, but we do have that Earth to Venus window to worry about. 
So I might have to go back and do some more building before I attend to this further. I really don't want to do two build episodes in a row. Man, 25 days. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's... Dang, that's 687, which is more than what we have in our tank. But our SRB, our kick stage, will give us 815. But we can't really shut that down or do anything about it once it's lit. So let's just say, after that, we make that maneuver, set as target. This will be our new descending node. Oh, and I'm not going to be able to... It's not going to tell me, is it, how much this is going to cost. But based on how hard I have to tug at this node, I'm guessing quite a lot. Hmm. Oh, this is a tough, tough call. Well, I guess I've got 25 days to think about it and try to plot this out a little better. Because maybe it looks like I'm just going to have to shoot for the inner rings all the way around. I, I think that's the best uh, course of action. 14.7 degree inclination. Ay ay ay! How much is that gonna cost? Just right off the bat. Wow. Mm, if you want to get it right, you're looking at about 2.3 kilometers per second. Which we've got more than half of that here. We probably have a kilometer per second in the in the probe itself. Probably. That's very interesting. No, I guess that makes up my mind. We're going to try to go for Iapetus way out here and uh, try to use a gravity assist to uh, rectify some of these other things. We're just going to have to be a little wasteful with our RCS from the probe to carry that SRB with us because just ditching it isn't really an option at this point. So that's what we're going to have to do, and that saddens me greatly, unfortunately. Yep, other way. Okay, so that was uh, me thinking out loud. Of course, uh, I'm going to wait a couple of days, or I'm, I'm not going to make this maneuver now, because uh, I, I would like to gather your opinions on this maneuver. I know, obviously, these things are not... Uh, my ascending, descending node are not in optimal places. 693. Actually, since I have one ignition left, it would be way more efficient. No, probably not. Let's say if I could move fuel from the probe into the core, or into the transfer stage, and burn it off through that AJ-10, which is uh, more efficient than these RCS thrusters, but that's just... Oh, that's a lot of wasted mass. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Alright, well, we're going to take a quick save here, and we'll be uh, returning to this shortly, and I guess we're going to head back to the Space Center so that I can goof off with uh, Venus rovers for a while. So we're uh, hanging out in the space plane hangar for just a little bit, and I've kind of decided that I was going to start fresh on the rover and try to get a uh, pod orientation that I could deal with. Um, so I built out a couple of new concepts and kind of refined it over time. This is me going basically hinge by hinge and trying to find a wheelbase and a length that uh, would work for this and yet still fit inside of this four meter bay. So there was a lot of trial and error and uh, silly mistakes made on how to make this rover as compact as possible. And uh, there you just saw that the uh, wheels not quite... You can't drive it out of the bay with the wheels deployed if, they're, uh, if the wheel base is that wide, not necessarily that long. So I tried a couple of different ways of uh, organizing these hinges and uh, trying to make it so that everything would just kind of fit together and we could still tuck it in the bay and still drive the silly thing out of the bay. So uh, kind of refining it hinge by hinge and then just uh, adding either more or less complexity 
based on uh, how well things fit and how well things didn't. Uh, how well, you know, like I didn't want to have anything impact anything else. Like uh, as far as when they're extending or retracting, uh, and just for safety's sake during like transit, if they're not pushed through the walls of the storage bay that they exist in, they won't be tempted to explode. So eventually, this was kind of the system I came up with. And uh, hopefully you can see it articulating around there well enough for uh, me to decide to take it outside for a little spin. So we will uh, jump to our outside camera and uh, take this little guy for a ride and try to get him to spin out and try to get him to just react poorly to anything. And he seems to be working pretty well. So we're going to take him back in inside and uh, try to deal with a power draw issue and maybe uh, remounting of some of the science equipment, getting all of the servos dialed in, making sure everything uh, fits very well and very nicely together. That's, uh, I don't know, it's still kind of a work in progress, but this was actually uh, many, many, many sessions over a couple of days of me just uh, messing around with this thing and trying to figure something out, and I don't know if I'm exactly happy, but we'll have to see. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.